Hey guys, what's going on? 30 books in 30 weeks. It's that time of the evening. Um, we're on, it's today's Saturday, so we have one more day left. This week we are in the battlefield of the mind and we are talking about how we think affects everything that we do and what we receive out of life. And But we don't often put much thought into our thoughts. And so thinking is an investment. It's an energy that goes along with how you think and then the subsequent actions that you take based on how you think. So as you come in, feel free to share this out. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some stuff I think everybody kind of knows about. We're talking about some backbiting, a little bit of finger pointing, some blaming, um, fault finding, that kind of thing. And a lot of people do that. Um, negativity is always amplified. It's always magnified. It's the good stuff that we have to dig and search and seek out. But you will always find what you look for. So if you look at life with a negative mindset, you will always find negative things. You become a negative person. You'll have negative conversations and become a toxic individual. That's just how that works. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Marcy Batiste. I'm a public speaker. I'm an author. And I am America's number one success and recovery trainer that is reality based. I want you to think about that. Reality based. Reality based success and recovery. What is that? That is the use of what is mm -hmm. our attachment to our truth and how do we how does that manifest in our lives and how we act and how we carry ourselves. And um using reality as a strategy for changing life going forward. So oftentimes we look at our past for permission to have our future and so if we've had a bad past and we've had some bad things happen and we've been through some stuff we having some crap happen then we just assume that crap is going to continue to happen because that's our experience and what I would say um, as a reality based success and recovery trainer is that um, we look to our past not to predicate our future but to direct our future so we don't continue to make the same mistakes um, and and reframing our attachment to whatever we experienced in the past. Um, known for a couple things. I live life on Mars. What's going on, Jay? I live life on Mars. I'm sold out to my happiness. That's my guiding light. That's my that's my main thing. And the thing I love most of all is being able to help other women shine. So sharing the information and the tools and the strategies and the techniques that I've used to build out the 10 pillars of star power that have allowed me to become completely free to live with my happiness as my North Star. That makes sense? So that's a little bit about me. 30 Books in 30 Weeks is a personal development journey that we're doing through books. And we are on week 15. We're wrapping up week 15. This is my anniversary for my happiness week. So um, it's been a really good week and I'm excited to share some things with you guys. But this week, um, Battlefield of the Mind is the book that we're reading out of by Joyce Mayer. Those of you who are familiar with Joyce know um, she's faith-based. And so um, this book um, actually does a really nice job of breaking down some scriptures. And I always love, um, um, I, learn, I learn more about the Bible through teaching than I do from reading. And so someone that can... Um, actually break down the different scriptures is always I always find that helpful and so I think she does a pretty decent job of that in this book and making concepts real life applicable so when I say that I need them to teach it I need to know and be able to show how does this apply to me and how do I take those biblical terms and some of the other things and apply them into my life and help me build up my faith platform right so tonight we're talking about backbiting, fault finding, and finger pointing and what that looks like and how does that relate to the Bible? What does the Bible say about it? And I love in chapter 19, 19 she uses the analogy of um, the relationship of a lot of times we, when we get to a place where we're doing a lot of that finger pointing and that backbiting and all that that bad behavior, we're exhibiting all that bad behavior. It's as it's in response to what we've experienced. So we've experienced some crap, some BS has happened, and so now we're lashing out, and that becomes our behavior pattern. And 
she's talking about how, um, like Jesus didn't do that. Like, you know, you all seen the sayings. They talked about Jesus will make you think they're not going to talk about you. Um, that's the same kind of thing. And so how you convert that energy and change it, but it's so easy to say, well, you know, this happened or that happened. And so I behave this way instead of saying, yes, this and this happened and owning that you choose to behave that way. You don't have to choose to behave badly because bad stuff happened in your past. And so, um, it was talking about, um, suffering, right? And how, how Jesus had to suffer and because of his suffering, he didn't, he didn't turn out to be a miserable person. He didn't turn out to be vengeful. He didn't operate from that vein. It was the opposite. It was like all his suffering transformed into love for us and to giving, you know, you know what I mean? Like protecting us and but we don't seem to think that like we, and it's almost like if bad stuff happens, we feel like we have a past to treat people badly or to behave badly. And that's just not true. Because like I always say, when we, when we think about how we think, you will always get back whatever you put out. And so just like, um, I'm trying to find the passage in here. She's talking in, I think it was in first Peter. She's talking about how, um, she said it was many years before I realized that the focal point of these verses in 1 Peter is not the suffering, but the attitude one should have in the middle of the suffering. And so we're not saying that you don't feel bad when you're going through bad stuff. She's suggesting, and based on the scripture she's, she's quoting in 1 Peter, um, but you still have to have a mindset that A, it's temporary. And you, you're not blaming someone else for, for your situation and understand that you still have a way to get out and still being able to say, but you know what? God got this. God got me. And that's, you know, when I read that, it made me think about this being my anniversary week from my domestic violence assault, the physical one. And I say that because... That was the one thing that it came to me so naturally when this happened. I, I remember standing in my friend's bathroom and we're trying to get the swelling to go down out of my face and everything. And I remember telling her, she's like, are you okay? And I said, no, but I will be. I'll be okay. And I said, I don't know what it looks like and I don't know how, but something good's going to come out of this. I don't know when. I have no idea what it'll look like and I don't even know why I feel this way, but I just have a feeling something good is going to come out of this because I know that my God did not get me out of that house. He did not spare me for no reason. And so there's a bigger purpose. And I understood that in, intuitively, I understood that even in the middle of my suffering, I, it, it was doing, it wouldn't have done me good to, to, to wallow in my pain and to wallow in my pity. But for something like it literally just came over me that I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be straight. And instinctively, I knew like everything's going to work out fine. And that's that attitude in the middle of the suffering that you have to get to in order to be able to pull yourself out of that. Otherwise, if you continue to stay in there and you continue to, to, to point fingers at other people and to blame other people and to talk about what they're doing instead of focusing on what you're doing, you're going to stay stuck. And this is all success and recovery is about not staying stuck. It's about moving forward. It's about if you've been stuck, that's okay. It's okay that you've been stuck, but you don't have to stay stuck. You can move forward, but not if your sole focus is on someone else. If, if you if you're constantly finger pointing and you're constantly backbiting talking about this person and you're constantly placing blame over here what's left to focus on what's here nothing there's nothing there and so you have to learn that even in the middle of chaos even in the middle of drama even in the middle of pain you have to draw upon 
the belief that it's going to get better and that you always have a choice. I always have a choice. That's what I always tell myself. I always have a choice. I always have a choice. And I, I tell clients, sometimes some choices, they all suck. That's true. But there's always one that sucks just a little bit less than the rest. Pick that one and let's start there. And that's the attitude that I have about absolutely every single thing that I look at. I Like I said, I knew like it was literally hours after he had beat me and held me hostage in my house. But instinctively, I knew God got me. He brought me through this. What's going on, Pastor Stewart? God got me. He brought me through this. And he didn't bring me through this for no reason. And it was instinctive. But it was instinctive because I have a foundation of faith. So I have experience from a number of times when the going got real, real bad and a whole lot of crap was going on. How many times I pulled through it when I was molested, I pulled through it. What, what made this different? Nothing. I know he's going to bring me through it. When I went through my divorce, what brought me through it? My God did. And so though the, having those experiences and being able to say, you know what? God got me. I'm a child of a king. What, what do I got to worry about? Not a thing. So why am I sitting over here worrying about Joe, Susie, Sally, and Ted when I really need to be worrying about me and what am I doing? I got to focus on me. Stay in my own lane, mind my own business. Three kinds of business. Your business, my business, and God's business. Make sure you're minding the right one. And if you're finger pointing, backbiting, and, and, and place some blame on everybody else, you minding everybody's business but your own. Get back in your own lane. Drive your own car. Stay in your own business. That's the message for tonight. Have a great one, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow night. As always, thanks for living life on Mars.